Hello and welcome everyone. In this lecture, we will move forward and we shall learn how to create an interface for the data access service to access the movies table that we have uh, created in one of the previous lectures. All right, so let's flip over to Visual Studio. So the in the Blazor movie app, and I will have to now create, right click and create a new folder named services. So add new folder and call this services and within this services I have to add a file class add class and I will name this movie db database service so this is movie db service class. Now this will contain our interface as well as the class that derives or that implements this interface in the next lecture. So here we go. So we'll, instead of a class, we'll make it an interface. So interface and by convention, I'll have to prepend I with the movie DB service to make it compatible to Microsoft's uh, expectations. Now then I'll start writing the um, different members of this public interface. Uh, now there is a question you might ask that why should we use the interface? Uh, now this interface is introduced just for an abstraction, just for making a loose coupling between the actual data access layer or data access service from any other component that might call it, you know, any other method that calls it for the CRUD application. So this uh, loose coupling is very important for the scalability of the product, okay? So let's get back to the task. So the first one is uh, task list of movie. And this one, get movies, get movies. Now, what is this task list, you know? So here, uh, before I embark on to say what is task, so let me go back to potential fixes first, and it will ask me to allow, uh, ask me to include blazer movie app dot models, all right? So this task is, you know, we are going to use asynchronous programming, asynchronous method calls and asynchronous method declarations and the body. You know, I have put a good resource for learning asynchronous programming. So async program is very important, particularly for, you know, complex nature of ASP.NET Core, that is the modern practice, you know. So what I could say through um, some of the um, research that I have done is uh, if I have got two ways I should use between a sync and sync method, which should I use? Now the thing is the first one that is the async method. Here the threads within the application they are scarce. Now you want to keep their number down and the first approach that is the async method of uh, calling uh, our async methods enables that by releasing the thread, it allows the, uh, to release the threads to do other work. Now in the second approach, uh, that is the synchronous programming, the thread is suspended for the duration of the input output operation. You would need more threads to handle the same number of requests. So by using async IO, it lets the same hardware handle more requests at the same time. In general, the thumb rule is that you should use asynchronous APIs if they are available. This will result in greater scalability on the server side since asynchrony will allow the calling request thread to be used for other requests while the asynchronous operation is in progress. There may however be specific scenarios when the, this guideline doesn't apply, but let's not worry about that. So in general, if there is an asynchronous API, then that's the one you should use. So, getting back to the 
um, task of creating more members of the uh, iMovie DB service. Let's get there. So, task. So everything is a, you know, it's of a task type uh, in asynchronous programming. So, task of movie. So, let's browse over. It represents an asynchronous operation that can return a value, all right? So, it is written a task and it is of, uh, it uh, operates on a generic class. So here is the generic movie model, okay? So, movie class. Now, next is get movie by ID. And I'll have to put an argument to the this method called uh, integer ID. So get movie by ID, okay? And then again task of movie. Add a movie. So movie object, movie, I'm inserting a movie record, inserting a movie and then edit movie. So I'll just copy it over to save time. And then paste. movie okay and then finally delete movie so now here I'll have to make a change so you have to delete a particular movie so it will be an ID okay so that's all done I've written the interface and let me again build it so build succeeded so in this lecture we have learned why we use an interface for data access services and what is asynchronous programming in a nutshell and the advantage of using it